we are going to discuss an another law of vector addition known as the polygon rule okay it is nothing but it is a repetition or repetitive application of the triangle law of vector addition okay let us consider there are three coplanar vectors for simplicity let there are three coplanar vectors obviously i am again mentioning you the condition the vectors must be of same kind and they express in same system of units i am again repeating this condition let there are three coplanar vectors say it is a1 it is a2 and it is a3 okay now i have to find out the direction of the resultant of this three coplanar vectors a1 a2 and a3 now in the previous class we have seen that how by applying the triangle law of addition of vectors i can find out the direction of the resultant of two vectors it was restricted only for two vectors you all know that triangle law of vector addition and parallelogram law of addition of vector is restricted only for two vectors okay now a1 and a2 when it is added look that a1 and a2 have been taken or have been in a particular way it is in the clockwise direction or anti sorry anti clockwise direction it is in the anti clockwise direction so according to the triangle law of addition of vector the third side of the triangle taken in the opposite order that is in the clockwise direction will represent the resultant of the vectors a1 and a2 so it is a1 vector plus a2 vector plus a3 vector okay now remaining left vector it is a3 now a1 plus a2 can be added to a3 a1 plus a2 can be added to a3 so a1 plus a2 and a3 these two vectors again are in the clockwise direction and the clockwise direction so the resultant vector will be in the clockwise direction so it gives a1 plus a2 plus a3 a1 vector plus a2 vector plus a3 vector okay so polygon rule can be represented in the following way let we want to add n number of vectors n number of vectors so n number of vectors can be represented by n sides of a polygon and you must note that the polygon must have n plus 1 number of sides for example if there are three vectors to be added then the resultant will be represented by the fourth side so the polygon must have n plus 1 number of sides clear okay so if we want to add n number of vectors n number of coplanar vectors <laughs> represented by represented by the successive sides of a polygon taken in a particular order and i again repeating you that the polygon must have n plus 1 number of sides then the last side of the polygon taken in opposite order last side of the polygon taken in opposite order will represent you the resultant just observe say say i have taken a1 a2 a3 a4 a4 and a5 i have taken five vectors five coplanar vectors and other restrictions are imposed already okay so i have to add these five vectors using the polygon rule so we all see that there are five number of vectors so as per our, as per our assumption the polygon must have n plus 1 number of sides so the polygon must have six sides okay <laughs> and the last side will represent you the resultant taken in the opposite order that is the last side will be this side and what will be its direction in this direction because a1 a2 a3 a4 and a5 are all in the anti clockwise sense so the last side will be in the clockwise sense okay now let us check that whether the result is correct or not okay you gradually add it is a1 plus a2 When a one plus a two is added with a three, this is 
ए वन प्लस ए टू प्लस ए थ्री नाउ ए वन प्लस ए टू प्लस ए थ्री विल बी एडेड विथ ए फोर विल बी एडेड विथ ए फोर शो ए वन प्लस ए टू प्लस ए थ्री प्लस ए फोर दिस इज दिस वन तेल दिस वन रिप्रेजेंट ए वन प्लस ए टू प्लस ए थ्री प्लस ए फोर दिस वन दिस इज नाउ ए वन प्लस ए टू प्लस ए थ्री प्लस ए फोर विल बी एडेड विथ ए फाइव सो आई एम फाइनली आई हैव रीच्ड इन द फाइनल ट्रैंगल लिटरली दिस ट्रैंगल इट इज ए वन प्लस ए टू प्लस ए थ्री प्लस ए फोर And it is a five. So when they are added by using the triangle law of addition of vector, I get the last side of the polygon. That is, it is it represents this vector represents a one plus a two plus a three plus a four plus a five. So what is our final statement? That if n <coughs> number of sides of a polygon are represented by n number of coplanar vectors taken in a particular order then the n plus 1th side or remaining side of the polygon taken in opposite order will represent you the direction of the resultant vector okay so it is nothing but it is a repetitive application of the triangle law of addition of vectors now let us consider Just an example, an example. Plate. I have just arbitrarily drawn a picture, drawn a picture, and I am representing some different vectors, different coplanar vectors represented by the different sides of this polygon. Okay. Plate. This side. It is a one. It is a two. It is a three. You all note that a three has been Taken in the opposite direction. Okay, it may be. Say it is a four. It is a five. And last one it is a six. But a six is in the again in the opposite direction. So here some vectors are taken in the clockwise direction. Some are taken in the anti-clockwise direction. No problem. I have been asked, or you have been asked, to find out the <coughs> relation between these six coplanar vectors. Okay. So. we can write the relation using the polygon rule of vector addition okay now a1 plus a2 it is a3 so in this direction it will be minus a3 vector it is a4 so a1 plus a2 minus a3 plus a4 it is represented by this side okay so this side will represent you a1 plus a2 minus a3 plus a4 Now a one plus a two minus a three plus a four plus a five will represent you a six, and in this case we can just consider the last triangle only, known as this triangle. From this triangle you all see that a one plus a two minus a three plus a four plus a three plus a four plus a five will be equal to a six. So our required relation is a six vector a six. It will be a one. Plus a two minus a three plus a four plus a five. Okay. Uh, we can write the relation in the way also. Just the side change. A four vector plus. So this figure gives you a relation between the given six coplanar vectors. The relation may be written in the way. A six plus a three equal to a one plus a four plus a five. Okay. Now, in dealing with the triangle law of addition of vector, uh, we shall <coughs> make a proof of the law known as the sine rule. You all know sine rule, and it is of tremendous help in doing simple problems related with the vector calculus. Uh, in this case, we, are, we, <coughs> we shall have a proof uh, of this particular law. Uh, when we shall deal with the cross product of multiplication of two vectors now in the meantime i am just stating you the law
से दिस इज एन आर्बिटरी ट्रेंगल एनी आर्बिटरी ट्रेंगल ओके से लेट दिस साइड इज रिप्रेजेंटेड बाय वेक्टर ए दिस साइड इज रिप्रेजेंटेड बाय वेक्टर बी एंड दिस साइड इज रिप्रेजेंटेड बाय वेक्टर सी यू ऑल प्लीज नोट दैट ऑल द साइड्स हैव बीन टेकन इन अ पार्टिकुलर ऑर्डर इन द एंटी क्लॉकवाइज सेंस ओके नाउ इन वेक्टर मेथड इन फिजिक्स द एंगल बिटवीन टू वेक्टर्स विल बी सच दैट सच दैट do that angle will be considered from which the two vectors appears to diverge from a point that means the angle between a and the vector b will not be this angle will not be equal to this angle but you just get the direction of a vector like this so the angle between the vector a and b will be this say this is theta 1 okay similarly it is the direction of the vector b it is the direction of the vector b So the angle between the vector b and the vector c will be this angle. So it is theta two. And the angle between remaining the vector c and the vector a, say this is the angle between vector c and vector a. So it is theta three. Okay. So geometrically, this angle is one eighty minus theta one. This angle is one eighty minus theta two. And this angle is one eighty minus theta three. It's okay. Now, according to the sine rule, we have. Modulus of vector a by sine theta two equals to. I am again repeating you that we shall have a proof of this law when we shall deal with the cross product of the vector multiplication 